I have to show that it's not a fluke that I'm really doing it day in and day out. The first black chef in New York City to be awarded a Michelin star. I think that fine dining is a way for chefs to really show like, hey, this is what I have to say, this is what I have to offer you. Opposed to the other way around, which is like a person knows what they want and they go get exactly what they want. My name is Charlie Mitchell, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, and I'm the chef of Clover Hill Restaurant, Brooklyn Heights. Now, we received our Michelin star eight months into being open, and I mean, that was obviously a, a crazy moment for us as a restaurant team. This fall menu being like our full year around the sun, it's important that we continue to show restraint and maturity in the food. So for the kitchen team, as far as the culinary direction, that like we tried to build a format of how the meal would flow. It starts off with a round of snacks, then it normally goes into like your raw fish courses and maybe like some caviar or some uni. And then it gets a little bit heavier just to make sure you understand that you're gonna get full. Usually it's two fish courses, and then you have a main course that's predominantly a bird, a red meat that's not beef, and then from there it goes into a progression of sweet bites. But we have to make sure that it's balanced, you know, you don't get palate fatigue, number one, and number two, you don't get too full. You know, growing up, I was first introduced to food just through family, the way we fellowshiped around food for any and every occasion. Specifically, my grandmother, Johnny, she definitely like lived in the kitchen. Her frying fish was probably the first thing I ate that I was kind of like, you know, like, what is this? Kind of like sparked something in me. I got my first real job at Forest in Birmingham. Google best restaurants in Metro Detroit. Called the restaurant actually they were hiring. He told me to show up with a chef knife, a paring knife, and a potato peeler. Chef Nick really introduced me to the world of fine dining. I realized that I knew nothing about cooking or about food, the culture, you know, how clean the space was, and you know, how they carried themselves. He started showing me cookbooks and learning about chefs and James Beers and Michelin stars, and all that kind of stuff. And from there, I just kind of got hooked. To create something that someone can't create for themselves at home, I felt like that was special. And that's what I love about it the most. We're just figuring it all out, so. Yeah, well, you're famous now. He worked here? <laughs> no way. Gotcha. So what's your tasting? What are you putting on the menu? What are you excited about? On the menu? Yeah. Uh, well, it's like 50%, honestly. It's like the last week, which is crunch time, which is crazy to say. And we've been through now, I think, three or four series of tastings. Yeah. And like after each one, I'm like, I hate this. I want to do this one over. For me, at least, when I've always tried to be creative without parameters, I hate everything. <laughs> I don't get it, like, it doesn't work or yeah. uh, it gets too far stretch. Yeah, so, that makes sense. So set rules of, you know, you wanna be fish, you wanna do this, you wanna do that, and stay within those rules. And I think that will help your creativity. Coming to it, I had no plan, I had zero plan. I didn't know what I was getting myself into or where this would lead, right? And what he did was the ones who wanted to learn and were very eager and will catch on, you know, he pushed you to, to your limit and also let us know that we needed to go to a different city, Chicago, New York City, to be able to receive the training that we wanted. Well, for us, I think a benefit, small team approach, you can build a better relationship with people and a better connection. And also, for a while, we were just focused on like just getting set up for service and just getting to the next one. You know, sometimes those larger restaurants, when you're a cook there, you don't really feel a connection to the cuisine. You know, maybe you can just feel like a piece of the puzzle, not the best way, opposed to here. You know, everyone does contribute to the food. You know, for me, I think it's important for this fall menu being like our full year around the sun that we continue to you know, push the boundaries in the restaurant, in the kitchen. So I think this menu, the flavors are always inspired by what's around us and the seafood that's available to us. But I think the style of food and the way we're approaching the ingredients has been very inspired by like refinement and granting some clarity and learning how to be a little bit more balanced and show restraint and maturity in the food. So I think that's my job is to kind of push the development of the maturity in the food. And I think that that's starting to really show as we debut this coming fall menu. It's been about creating an environment that feels like home and cozy and bringing a cuisine that is elegant and refined that you would get at your, you know, 
very fancy, probably white tablecloth restaurant in, in Manhattan, but we wanted to do what we felt like was a more neighborhood or Brooklyn approach to fine dining. I have to show that it's not a fluke, that I'm really doing it day in and day out. So I think now I am really embraced, like, okay, I'm here, we're here. This is truly what it is. And then also understanding that the job that I've set out to do is not done yet.